everybody, John here and on to the garage today. It's very exciting because we are playing with Campy and da, 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 hopefully by tonight she'll have power steering. <laughs> so currently um, steering on our T25 is absolutely standard which means it's uh, shocking. Um, when you're driving it, it's fine. Um, it's not even overly heavy, but it, it's, it doesn't whirl around, that's for sure. It's when you're maneuvering. If you're in a car park or you're trying to shunt around somewhere, it is so heavy. Um, I mean, I'm a reasonably fit sort of guy, all steering locks come on, and it's hard work. And so we've got a 17 inch steering wheel, which is huge, um, which means it's just about manageable, but I do just about manageable. Not kidding, that's gone exactly back to where it started. Um, 17 inch wheel, some um, caravels have power steering, uh, hydraulic system, and you can buy that as a retrofit but it's uh, reasonably involved in pipe work, etc. So we're going down this route, which is electric power steering kit. Um, this one's from TechScan, and I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to buy one of these so you can find out how much it is today um, and get one for yourselves. Uh, electric power steering comes with all the bits of wiring and modules that you need to make the thing work. Some pretty decent instructions. And I'm going to take advantage of the fact that it's going to be power steering to change the steering wheel for something a lot more attractive. And again, I'll leave a link in the description below if anybody else wants to get one of these because it's not so easy to get a hub for the T25, but I'll leave the link below for you. And this is 15 inch. So if I was just fitting this, it would be much worse um, as we're going power steering 15 inch is a little bit more sensible size still very large um, but it also gives you a lot more clearance above your legs you can move your seat around more and it doesn't obscure the instruments so 15 semi dish so that's where the legs are cranked just a little bit is a pretty good idea you can get a 17 inch one of these uh, with flat spokes not dish the issue with that is the flat spokes mean you've got a semi dish on the original wheel. This gap comes down to about your finger's width and you're constantly catching the stalks. So as long as you're power steered, why not have 15? It's a full team, wave team. Yay! And they're all helping out with the van uh, or teas and coffees and Vicky. So the first step is to take off the cowling around the steering column. And all you need to do is to loosen off Phillips head screw here and another one on the other side. And the rest of the cowl is actually on a clip. So that's the bottom cowl off. And you just see it's got a couple of clip, or well one clip I should say, that hangs onto the column. With the bottom cover off, the top cover isn't actually attached to anything. So all you have to do, if we can get a focus, okay, is give it a wriggle. So that gets us to this situation. And now we're going to start disconnecting the connectors that attach all of the uh, stalks and the ignition barrel. So before we do that, good idea, into the house and let's disconnect the batteries. Earth only is fine. These are brilliant, I really recommend them security idea if nothing else so I'm going to take off these connections whilst having your cookie 
Um, what you want to do, and this is why I've disconnected the battery, is just put your screwdriver in, do a little tweak to slowly push them off. Obviously, I might touch the electrical connection, so that's why it's important to disconnect your battery. Don't want to wrangle the wires, they're old. But you do want to just ease them off. So we don't have to buy any new bits. Mm -hmm. And that's the first one. And we're off. So that is the loom free. And while we're at this stage, it's worth noting this really unusual steering column. Uh, I've never looked at this before. You can see that the column itself is cranked. It doesn't go straight down. There was a wire running through this tube. So I think that's just an earthing point. I shall discover more about that as we go. Next, lever off the horn push. If you get your screwdriver well down the side so you don't scratch the top face, and just keep moving it around. Leave a little bit at a time, all four corners should pop off. We're all discovering together here. Oop. That's a good noise. Just managed to get that one off. So, and by the fact that's a brand wire, I think we now know where the wire is that's going down the column there. So, next step is to try to set the steering wheel off. And we're using a 15 sixteenths socket. As this is German, it's obviously a metric, but that one fits nicely. Uh, let's see how easy it is to crack this with a straightforward ratchet. And it is doable. Uh, top tip with taking off steering wheels is you don't take the nut off the entire way because many a person has knocked themselves out by trying to pull the steering wheel off and it won't come and it won't come and it won't come till it hits you. So it's a really good idea to leave the nut on. And Attempt one is just wriggle the wheel and see if it's going to come off. If not, then we'll be using the puller. Right, let's see if it's going to come. Oh, that looked like it went straight away. Yes. That weren't too bad. It wants us to come off, I think. And I think the wires are going to come with it. <coughs> yeah. And there's our wheel off. Now we're going to try and slide the ignition barrel and the stalks off and there's a 6mm allen bolt which we'll try and see if we release. Again, I'm not convinced that that's standard, it may be there was a break off bolt originally. But bolt's out. Now theory that's just going to slide up. So the bearing is in that top piece, yeah. which is quite unusual. I've not seen that on other vehicles. Well, big move forward, and now we get down to that bracket, and that has got break-off bolts. So they're going to be a new challenge. We've been quite lucky with these break-off bolts because somebody has undone them before, hence they're not overly tight. But essentially, you're either going to have to use more grips like we've used to 
have the base. Or if you're unlucky, you have to cut a slot in the head using a Dremel. So this bracket is just held in with a couple of 13mm bolts and the nuts are captive or welded on, so you're only going to get one side. And then that yellow one is what clamps the column top to the column bottom. You just need to undo those. So this is the final bit of the column and that's now going to come out. The first thing is get the boot off, which is basically just about putting back the carpet and removing it. Looks like we've got a few little screws, but they're not doing anything because the rubber's gone. <laughs> Driverless T25, you've seen it here first. It's a much cleaner dashboard. We'll keep it like that. It's almost time for a biscuit, I think. This one's a little bit difficult to access to get the very bottom bolts. We're gonna just take that frame off around the edge that was gonna hold the boot in place for a bit better access. So there is the old and the new columns. Obviously the new columns got this big <laughs> motor and gearbox in the middle. But you can also appreciate um, the effort that goes into modding these units. Now, I opted to buy the unit pre-welded and looking at the effort that's gone in, I made a good choice. So first of all, I'd have had to cut the outer tube on my old column for this unit. I'm also cut as part of this shaft to attach to the shaft inside this gearbox, which is a bit I didn't fancy welding. Um, come down this end, um, there's this great bracket that has obviously been laser cut and bent, especially for this application. So the guy who's uh, building these has invested some money in some tooling or getting a shop to make those up. So thank you, well done. And the bottom end, we've got this UJ um, which isn't a Volkswagen thing, um, maybe off uh, Peugeot, and then that's been welded to the bottom half of the steering column to give you the right spline pattern. And yeah, I think worth the extra to have somebody else do the welding. It also eliminates this craziness here. Let's take the boot off for a minute. Got this cranked joint, cush drive here, which is probably really important <laughs> in order to um, deal with the torque you're having to put on the steering wheel without breaking anything. But I'm not going to need that anymore. So this unit's going to have a lot more of a direct drive. Really impressed. Really good kit hot and uh, so we're all out it's ready now for the reinstall but before we do any reinstalling I think it's probably time to admire what we've got so far have a little wonder I think yes nice van and then most importantly, go and find a nice cup of coffee. Maybe another biscuit. Okay, so we're just starting to install everything now. We've got the last joint still in place, which is a rubber a cush drive. It has a cable coming out the middle of it. And that goes through the shaft to the other side of this rubber donut and attaches to the clamp that's on the steering um, box down here so basically that's just an earth connection back to the steering i'm not sure it's absolutely essential but there's no reason not to keep it and on the new system there is a hollow section on this new uj comes out here and then we're going to take it up and attach it to the clamp on this so that it's basically replicating the same effect as is on the old column. So thread him up through here. And he's in. 
fish him out around the back. There he is. And he's gonna get attached electrically to that bolt there by just snipping that off and putting an eye, um, electrical eye on the end of that. Into position ish. And we're in. That's good. So if I pick this up, I might be able to maneuver. There we go. And looking at where this bracket sits, I can see we've got to go into the spline some more. Okay, well, we're winning, but we've just learned another little top tip after struggling for quite some time to get, there we go, struggling quite a while to get that bolt in, uh, which is one of the brackets that holds the whole column to the vehicle. What we learned is you've got to leave really slack every joint and with that is this one, which is the new UJ. You've got to leave that one and the one underneath to give you enough wriggle room to pull the column up to line up with the holes. Uh, also, make sure, okay, stuck in the back. there you go, there's our wiring. Uh, when we first pushed it up, we got all the wiring tucked away neatly so we didn't trap it back here. Um, you've got to get it through the gap over the top of the motor below the dash. If you bolt it all up tight, you might not actually get some of these connector heads mm. through. So pull it through, tuck it in that gap, and um, we'll organise it later. But looking good. Got it. And then, there we go. Into there. So, second time lucky, <laughs> we've reinstalled it and now experts at installing, reinstalling, and this time with the rubber boot on. Quick little curve on the bench. So that's the stuff that's come out and been replaced by the new column. Before you get rid of your steering wheel, there's this item needs to come off if you're gonna use the same uh, steering wheel replacement as me. So some of you are gonna be fitting a power steering and that's the end of it. But if you wanna go for um, changing the boss as well, you're gonna need this bit. So if we look at this, see it's got a lug. And that lug there You've got to remember where it goes. So I'm going to turn the wheel over. And that's the wrong way up. That's the right way up. The curve at the top. And when we turn it round, discover that the lug is facing towards the right hand side of the vehicle. Um, this is a right hand drive UK spec vehicle. And if you put your screwdriver underneath the black plastic part and very gently and evenly start prising, because you don't want to distort that brass ring, you can remove the whole of this horn, slider, pickup, track, whatever you want to call it. connector comes through with that. So you've got to salvage that from your wheel and the lug goes on the right hand side. So next we're going to refit the stalks. We've still got the keys in because when you take the keys out that bit sticks out and is uh, going to lock your steering. We need to get that past there and into that bit. So, a bit goopy. Uh, it's 
slides down so far. And then you have to take the screw out. To slide it on the rest. There he goes. And then get the screw back in. Connect all the sockets. That shape. Can you see that all right, Dad? Yeah. Yep. So that one is your ignition. Yeah. And he goes over here. Like so. Yeah. Then the next one is this long thin connector. Um, yeah. Goes on here. This one goes on the bottom. If you can see that. And that one goes on the top. So put it all back together in theory, other than the steering wheel and the cowling, we're back to where we started from, but with a power steering motor, not wired up. So <laughs> just gonna see if everything still works. So ooh, made a click for ignition, which is good. Starts. Indicates left, indicates right, wipers, smooth as ever, squirters, all good, and my rear wipe, that's the type of word for it, yep, yeah. horrible noise. Now, the only bit I don't know now is my horn, which I believe if I touch this to this, should go off. So, I'm just gonna grab my screwdriver and let's hope. <coughs> hey! We did good. Oh, the, um, the only thing we haven't checked is does the steering lock work? So, if we just grab, can we grab the old yeah. steering wheel, Dad? Cancel function because we've taken that off. Should allow us to see. There we are. He's on. Whether or not we get a steering lock. So keys out. Fingers locked. Crossed. Locks. Bingo. Brilliant. <laughs> so, all in all, not too bad a day's work. Yeah, what we're going to do now is just put the nut back on the steering wheel, nick it back up, and I think that's our part one done um, because we've now got all the gummings where we just need to do electrics to get power steering and modify the new steering wheel to change to the 15 inch wood room wheel. It doesn't stick out much, it looks good doesn't it? Yeah, very good. I, I think it's quite a neat yes, job it's very neat. and if you look where your knees go I mean that's a little bit further back than my normal driving position but if I, even if I move forward nowhere near anything no. so pretty happy. <laughs>